Hello everyone! So as promised, I'm back at the V1 missile quarry, but this time I'm going inside. It's been two weeks since I recorded the first video, and haven't been around. To the left is the main entrance, but it's impossible to get in this way. And here, the second entrance to the quarry, which is still accessible. So last time I stopped here, but not today. I'm wearing a mask for this exploration because this kind of place is full of dust and just walking around can make the air unbreathable. And I recommend that you do the same if you explore such locations. It will prevent you from blowing bricks out of your nose after the exploration. The door seen from inside and the only exit I know at the moment. It's much bigger than I'd imagined. And my lead panel can't even light the ceiling because it's too high in some places. I found a very poor quality plan. The area where I'm moving forward was apparently used for communication, but I'm not 100% sure. This car is beginning to be eaten by rust. There are still some storage containers because they're probably bigger than the doors. Otherwise people would have already taken them out to do stupid things with them. Somebody burn a bed here. In the last video, a person told me to buy a rover with a camera to explore this kind of place. It could be interesting but much too expensive for me. It's hard to say if it was a corridor or a staircase. It's all collapsed anyway. It's dangerous here. Satanist and hippies, why not? An old cable for lighting. When the quarry was occupied by the Nazis, much of it was well lit. There was also an advanced ventilation system and all the equipment needed to work properly. Emergency power supply and operation and transforming current. But I'm not sure about this one. I don't know what it is, but it looks like it was added after the German occupation. This seems to be more of a maintenance room than a communications room. I know it won't work because the wires are cut, but I can't resist pressing it. I've been looking for information about these metal breakers, but haven't found anything yet. After the war, the area was used for mushroom cultivation, so it may have belonged to the Nazis or to mushroom growers. According to the information I found, this place was used as a bunker to protect it in case of bombardment. 
Walls and ceilings had to be fortified in these rooms. I don't know if the pieces were hermetic to the gases though. It can be an emergency exit. This room has two large benches on either side, and around 20 people, probably more, could easily take shelter here. Another explorer took a photo of this place in 2016, and according to him, it appears to be a lampstand. This seems to confirm the bunker. If there's no electricity after the attack, flashlights will come in very useful. This cage was probably on the ground for a long time. The marks left look like frozen shadows, very nice. This number is used to identify the rock pillars. It would be really nice to find maps indicating each number. I've seen photos from 2008 of people exploring the area in their cars, which must have been a lot of fun. It's an old skill, the pan is missing, but you can still see some of the numbers. I'm approaching the area where the Germans detonated the V-1 rockets before giving up. A small part of the ceiling has collapsed here. There's a lot of trash here, some of it appears quite recent. While well, some looks older, so it's hard to say how old it is. I'll continue along the main path for now, as it seems to be the safer option. You can still see the exit from here. A barrel of bleach, it's labeled in French. It may have belonged to the growers, or it could simply be a makeshift garbage dump. What is this? There are two small hooks at the bottom that must have been used to lift something very specific. If you know what it's for, don't hesitate to let me know. You can see this wall from the outside in my previous video. It looks like an old oven, completely blown up.
There are old campfires. People used to party around here only a few years ago and still do, but it's very rare now. How did they get a treat into this? I've seen this type of cage in other quarries, used for growing mushrooms. It's so rusty, it's hard to guess what it is. It's impressive to think that all the space was originally filled with stones. The effort required to excavate all of this over hundreds of years is incredible. Did a tank roll over this car or something like that? This one doesn't even look like a car anymore. At that point, I switched off my camera to change the battery. After that, I didn't pay attention and don't restart the recording and have walking for 10 minutes before I noticed it. I'd like to take this opportunity to show you what the V1 missiles looked like. I arrived at a very special place. The Germans had collapsed the ceiling here for destroy and hide the famous V1 rockets. Here, the damage is minimal, but further away nearly for square kilometers have collapsed and are inaccessible. And this, my friends, is a V1 rocket. I knew before I came that there was one remaining, but I didn't know exactly where it was. It's obviously not brand new. Other explorers identified it with this marking a long time ago. This is a part of the fuselage. It's very damaged and rusty, but it's amazing to find this. And this was the left wing. Really cool. To be honest, if I hadn't seen the photos with the explanations, I wouldn't have realized what it was. It's not too difficult to get there. I'll take my dad there one day. He'll be happy to see that. I'm going to avoid walking on fallen rocks for safety's sake. This place is really quiet. The only sounds I hear come from me. I wonder what this arrow indicates because the exit is on the opposite side. There must be an access to this wall further on. It's a beautiful mountain of rock. Imagine what's hidden underneath. Still no access to this wall. It's getting mysterious. What's behind it? Another barrel of bleach. The lanes here are very wide, so trucks can drive around.
It's so spacious here, yet I feel almost confined due to the darkness and silence that surround me. People make extra excesses to get from one gallery to another. It's a bit small for me. I prefer to bypass it. What are these pipes? I'll follow them, we'll see. There are barrels of bleach in good condition around here. It smells like chemicals. It's empty, but there's a strong smell of petrol. I'm going to head back to the entrance, because I'm starting to feel a bit disoriented from wandering through the galleries. This area was used as a loading dock for trucks. If my sense of direction is good, this should bring me closer to the exit. I think there are enough arrows to keep me from getting lost here. A new car, also eaten by rust. A piece of the car seat. So, good news, I managed not to get lost. I feel better. I'll continue exploring the side of the main entrance before leaving. It looks like an oven. Apparently, the kitchens were near the main entrance. But it seems small enough to be used by an army, even if there were several of them.
There's so much to explore. Apparently this barrier was added after the war by French army. Behind this pile of rocks is the main entrance, which I showed you in the first video. A large gas cylinder, I suppose. Sounds empty. One more here. Completely empty. These rocks are really huge. Sounds pretty good for a first exploration. It's time to get out and get some fresh air. The next time, I will come back with friends to explore this place more deeply. And of course I'll be filming and posting videos of future explorations of this place. I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of dust in the air right now. It's good to see the light. I must admit, I'm glad to get out of here safe and sound. I hope there's no one outside. Nobody! The way is clear. I forgot to show you this at the beginning. This large concrete block was used to close off the main access during bombardments, but the Germans never closed them and one of them fell. There was a rail to push the blocks. I am next to the main entrance above what used to be the kitchens according to the plans. There are old chimneys remaining, which seems to confirm the presence of kitchens. A new entrance. Next time I'll use this way to enter. Maybe it was to reinforce the roof. Or maybe there were anti-aircraft guns here. I'm back at the bunker from the first video. I had said I wouldn't go back there again because it scared me last time. But I want to see if there's still the same noise and where it comes from.
It was making clockwork sounds, and at the same time, there was a trembling sensation. It was very strange. Well, this time it's very quiet. No sound at all. Nothing has changed since my last visit. I didn't notice it the first time, but how did this piece of wall get so damaged? The bunker plans indicate that this room was used to store ammunition, and a Nazi report mentions five dead and six missing in the bombing on July 5, 1944. In my opinion, a shrapnel probably penetrated this bunker and hit the ammunition stockpile that would explain the visible damage. Tell me what you think. One of the strange noises I heard last time was something like a clock. When I watched my video, I saw an object that looked like one. I was right. But it doesn't work. Well, it couldn't have come from that. Anyway. It looks like fragments of shrapnel. Alright, I'm done here. I'm going to head back up to check the ventilation shafts in the fields. It's very cold outside. And it should be interesting with the temperature difference from the quarry. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. It doesn't look very good on the video, but steam is coming out of the ventilation system. Currently, it's 1 degree Celsius outside, but inside the quarry, the temperature remains around 12 degrees Celsius throughout the year. This one is dangerous, as a small child or animal can easily fall in. I walked a bit more just to check this electrical building, and then I'm finally done. There's a lot of wind here. I have never seen anything as dangerous in exploration. Since when has it been like this? The wind is pushing me from behind. It's like the hole is trying to pull me in. This place used to supply electricity to the quarry, but given its dangerous condition, it would be better to demolish it, unfortunately. A bomb hit the roof. The damage seen from the outside. This time it's well and truly over. Thank you for watching. The next videos won't be about this quarry, but I promise to come back to this place several times throughout the year. Take care of you and see you soon.